Okay, folks, this is um, uh, deep learning applications, AI first engineering. This is the unit on commerce and e commerce. And what it's discussing is recommender engine. But there is no information, uh, as far as I know, about how Amazon and Walmart use recommender engines. So we're going to cover the cases which has been studied, which is digital media, where the recommender engines are effectively the same technology. So we can learn about the key technology from digital media. So here we come to Spotify. And it has, here's a nice medium.com article. And Spotify has three different methods, which are well, well known methods. One is collaborative filtering. That's sort of the old fashioned staple method, which we'll just quickly describe. And we have um, natural language processing to look at the text in the song. And of course, the idea is you're going to be recommending songs with similar text. And audio modeling is going to look at the actual audio structure and understand the, the, the nature of that uh, structure. That's so sometimes called the music genome. And uh, we will not do much detail on any of them, but uh, more detail than one line. Well, so here's the first one, and here's a picture from somewhere. And um, presumably that uh, medium.com article. And we have two people. One likes PQRS, another likes QRST. And then the idea is that Q, R, and S are in common. So these people are actually have similar likes. And so we can take P and recommend it to this fellow, and T and recommend it to that fellow. Because the basic idea is if people have a similar Interest, then the things that the then the ones that they've watched and other people with similar interest haven't watched are good candidates. That's collaborative filtering. Natural language processing. So this is crawling the web to look for text about us about music and see what they're saying about specific songs and artists. This is also of course the text in the song. And then you look and you just sort of study the type of the language and the adjectives, and um, also which artists and songs are discussed alongside this song. And then you look at the top terms, and uh, you can have lots and lots of terms. And then you have build a giant model, text model, which can again be used to recommend similar songs to a user. Here is a um, band called ABBA. This is Tells you why this is such a hard field. Anything important is not published. And this is 2001. And this score here is a well known thing called a TF IDF term frequency, the number of times the term appears in the document, divided by the inverse document frequency. And we specify bigrams, noun phrases, bigrams, of course double words and uh, adjectives. And um, here we have byte um, dancing queen, mamma mia, disco era, winner takes, dot, dot, dot. These are the scores. For the uh, noun phrase, we have dancing queen again, uh, Benny, chess, vu, Dot, dot, dot. So here we have scores. And then on adjectives, we have perky, nonviolent, Swedish, and so on. So these are top terms representing this, this band. Um, anyway, you can now actually do a detailed analysis of the audio using CNNs, just as CNNs can analyze um, images, they can analyze audio. And um, you just get a CNN characteristic and match similar musics together so that if somebody likes a heavy metal, then you find other heavy metal songs for them. But you don't do it, you can either do that for the text heavy metal appearing, or because the audio structure is similar between heavy metal songs and different uh, artists. And as I said, forgot to point out on the previous slide, Spotify combines all three approaches. 
and that in general is true. People always do. You, you always do. You always. You don't have a single approach. You have multiple approaches. Now, recommender engines used to all be done by collaborative filtering as their most favorite method, but now variational autocoders and ordinary autocoders have taken over. Um, <coughs> And I think they've made cloud bit of filtering obsolete, at least for big data. And here are some couple of medium.com articles. One comparing auto encoders with the older methods, and one implementing audio coders. And also deep generative models which can generate songs which are like the current song. And there's something called discounted cumulative gain, which is. Um, Whose lar the larger the value is, the better. We also have a personalization index, which measures how different predictions are for different people. With the persuasive ones, it means everybody gets a different rec set of recommendations. It's not so obvious you need perso to be one. You would like the NDCG to be as big as possible. And here uh, we will define these methods on the next slide. And uh, this must be French model. And we have memory based, MNF, NOMF, here we have the variation encoder, auto encoder, and so on. And here we have this one in NDCG, the one of quality is 0 0.403. And only competing one is to variation auto encoder, it's an ordinary auto encoder. All right, let's, uh, and these are all done on a simple. General purpose, low end system, and Google Colab. All right, content based filtering basically looks at the properties of the, of the songs or the, ob in the objects. And um, this property is the drawing from movie lens. Memory based is the Kate nearest neighbor algorithm. Uh, that takes a, your song and finds the ones which are near it in the distance space where the distance is measured uh, by the user's likes and dislikes of these songs. A non-negative matrix factorization is a classic uh, machine learning approach for recommender engines. Neural matrix factorization is a neural network based version of this. A restricted Boltzmann machine is a variation of the multilayer perceptron to learn probability distribution. Deep collaborative is a six layer MLP, mapping click vector into a recommendation. Autoencoders, um, are what were they described in our general discussion, and they're a very important type of neural net. Hybrid averages, autoencoder, and memory based. And there was a second article I listed there, and that goes into more detail about how to use the autoencoder and how do you generate it adversarial networks. Okay, now we come to the revolution. Over the last, um, I guess, five years, all the old method, <coughs> like uh, collaborative filtering, have been replaced by deep learning, at least for the large scale recommender systems. And I say, although we don't actually know what Amazon does, I'm assuming Amazon has done this. And uh, there is a base paper here from YouTube in 2016, a fellow called Covington et al. And here's an MIT undergraduate who I think probably worked at Google and describes uh, the method at a very high level. These are not in detail, these are not very detailed. Um, and then there's uh, a couple of um, articles here, one other one here. Uh, there's a Netflix in this um, advertising for jobs states they have a similar problem to Google. Um, now the very latest 2019 model for YouTube is described in two papers at the 2019 Recommender System Conference. Here in 2016, an archive paper is on Google Play recommender systems. You know that when you go to Google Play, it's always telling you what to do. Um, here is 
um, a particular, uh, another article I found for to describe these key deep learning ideas. Uh, notice that uh, if we quote from this original paper, YouTube has undergone a fundamental paradigm shift towards using deep learning as the general purpose solution for nearly all learning problems. They mentioned Google Grain, but then that really means TensorFlow. And at that time, TensorFlow was only just come out. And it says our models learn a billion parameters and are trained on hundreds of billions of examples. Those are good numbers, billion parameters. No wonder you can get a good answer. Because the traditional methods have essentially no parameters. So no wonder they don't do so well. OK. Here is some very broad and pretty incomprehensible uh, discussion. For the next few slides are all incomprehensible. I'm sorry, that's just life. I just don't think there's enough detail. You need weeks and weeks of study to do better. OK. So at least we know that there are basically, actually both in 2016 and 2019, two networks. Number one and number two, that we can understand. Number one generates candidate, well here we're doing YouTube candidate videos. On Amazon it would be candidate of a bottom eye if that's what I was buying. And network number two takes those candidates and puts in a lot more detail and ranks them. And they have different optimizations. Um, this one tries to make certain it doesn't miss anything important. This one tries to make certain it doesn't make any mistakes. Um, so that's precision, optimized for precision. Each thing coming out of neural network number one should be highly relevant. Um, and uh, that's the criteria. And here's this picture trying to explain precision versus recall. Uh, and precision is the number of true positives over true plus false. It doesn't mention anything about what fraction of the true positives it finds, just that it all should be, the number of greens should be very high. For the case of um, DNN number two, we're looking at um, how many relevant items are are, um, are are selected, which is the ratio of um, of this number here to the total size. You just got to find the most relevant ones. Out of the ones you originally selected, you won't find at stage two, things that should have been there but were missed at stage one. That's not, for, not a fair thing. So the recall is on the ones you selected. So you represent users by uh, vectors. Um, and <coughs> this is this uh, 2016 architecture of number one. And it basically goes through a whole bunch of um, Actually, relatively straightforward networks. Softmax is a relatively straightforward way of finding probabilities. And actually, at the end, you go and do a top, you do a nearest neighbor type method to, to select the very best. And these are all fully connected networks. There's nothing convolutional here, because these aren't images or anything. These are just learning how to compare you have representations of videos, representation of searches, representations of, of users, and so on. Like their age, gender. And here, these words here are the same in the next two couple of slides. And the, we have up to, we have, we, <laughs> We are trying to predict 256 possible classes. Um, and we just go down through a set of decreasing size layers. OK.
So here is how you, what you put into your user vector and how effective it is. If you just look at what they watch, you get a 6% precision. If you add in watches and searches, it goes up to 10%. If you add searches and age, 11%. If you put in all possible features, it is fill in all 256 possible ways of describing a user, then you get up to almost 13%. And here's how big the network is. And there's a slow improvement as you increase the network depth. Now we have to take um, the specifications and feed in all these videos and um, try to rank the videos. And you feed in hundreds of features, and they again run through multiple um, fully connected networks. This is quite interesting. This is not a complicated network. And um, it's interesting that such a straightforward network, where all the skill is probably here. What do you put in this vector? Um, and with this here, we have the input, which is a user combined with a video. Um, the user, of course, is fixed over a set of videos. And then you have a specification of the videos. Um, and here is the um, percentage of videos um, watched that didn't match the prediction. And so actually, it's not such a huge success, namely, as you go down to the most complicated network, the users ignoring you 35% of the time. And if you did nothing, it's 42% of the time. So I would say I'm surprised it's not more successful. Now we have a 2019. Um, and this uses sort of autoencoder, they, they do extract low dimensional models um, of the uh, of what's going on and we classify we have separately do users and queries and items and he says, says, says items of video for YouTube but again they're books or or hippopotami for for um, um, Amazon. And then we do separate study of users, separate study of hippopotami, and then we combine them. So then we have the little more detail. Um, we have the, this is presumably the second neural net. And it's again, we have um, <coughs> these user features. Um, candidate features, and we try to combine them. And this is this ranking system, the second neural net. And this, this is actually more complicated than the previous one. It's got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of intertwined things which are getting merged together. Um, I say I, I don't quite see I can understand this well without going to much more detail in my study. And then we have the final slide is not on, is not on YouTube at all. It's on Google News, and it's, there we sort of have another recommender problem. You have Google News has to decide which items to put up there. Um, and this is sometimes called latent, it used to be called uh, dividing documents into topics. Because remember, Google News is done by topics. And then you do that by taking the documents, breaking them up into their component words, count the words. We saw that the TFIDF. And then you just, you can actually find the topics, which are essentially clusters automatically. And there's this famous latent Dirichlet allocation algorithm. And um, 
You can also use um, deep learning and autoencoders to find latent variables which are analogous to topics. And of course, we haven't the slightest idea what Google uses, not so ever. Um, and there is a paper here which uh, does a totally different way, which is probably not used by anybody, uh, based on keywords or characterizing articles. Sort of a recommend, much more like a normal old fashioned recommender engine. So this is a really interesting area. And it is amazing to me how everything has switched to deep learning. And there are lots and lots of articles out there describing this. But like, I mean, it's, it's actually just the, whereas, you know, we have no idea what Amazon does. Even when people do something, the descriptions are usually so obscure and they leave out every single possible detail that it's very difficult to know what's going on. So that's it. And that's the end of this uh, last lesson of this unit on commerce. And I say this is. This is only really commerce because for a very important reason, commerce uses recommender systems. Even remember, we were saying the future of bricks and mortar is recommender engines. Because the bricks and mortar need to somehow personalize the experience of somebody entering a brick and mortar store. So somehow the face recognition system at the store door has to identify the person. It goes into that, compares, feeds in all the, all the things that are in the store, and then it tells the user what they want to do. That sounds reasonably practical to me. And there's all deep learning based, starting with deep learning for images, deep learning for recommender engines. Okay, that's the future of the commerce. We've got it. Thank you. It's not, it's not all bad. We're going to succeed.